All right, I didn't really have much time to uh, prepare uh, for this, but uh, this is a Reformation Day banquet or maybe even All Hallows' Eve banquet. Um, and so we're wanting to give honor to the saints who have come before us. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we have an evangelical background, a charismatic background, and sometimes uh, the, the accusation is justly thrown at, at us that uh, we're untethered from the past and we don't really give our due diligence in understanding our history or being connected to history. So uh, this banquet is for the purpose of remedying that, to give honor to the, the saints who have gone before us and um, to remember what they did and uh, to pay them respect and to do so in a way that is um, wholesome and not superstitious or anything like that. But uh, uh, I wanted to honor St. Athanasius. That's, our, that's who we named the parish after. And um, we did so because St. Athanasius is famous for resisting Arianism, which is uh, a subordinationist theology which places Christ uh, as a creature and not uh, within the Godhead, not as fully divine. Um, uh, Arius uh, uh, was famously a priest in Alexander who had uh, posited that Christ was um, uh, the highest created being. And uh, so we reject that. We say that he is of the same, sub the same substance as the Father. The homo uh, usius <laughs> was the Greek term that, uh, that uh, St. Athanasius uh, wanted to defend. And uh, this, there was a council, the Council of uh, Constantinople, and it declared orthodoxy, it declared Christ fully divine. And shortly after that, much of the church went into Arianism. There, was, there were bishops who were very sympathetic with uh, Arius, this priest in Alexander, and uh, Athanasius famously defended orthodoxy during this time to such an extent that he was actually exiled five times on five separate occasions. There were all kinds of exiles, either from uh, the emperors or uh, from uh, church uh, synods and councils. And, um, and at the same time, there were synods and councils which affirmed and defended uh, Athanasius. And so we have kind of both things happening here. We have some in the church who are uh, supporting Athanasius and some who are uh, actually detracting from him. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to, uh, uh, I've kind of, it's kind of gotten away from me here, but um, tradition has it that uh, um, Mark, um, one of the apostles, um, I think it was Mark, founded the, the see in Alexandria. Does that sound right? Okay. Was he, he was an apostle? Yeah, okay. So from Mark comes the bishops. We, we've been talking about apostolic succession today. And uh, 300 years after Christ, about the end of the uh, uh, third century, uh, you have Bishop Alexander in Alexandria. Alexandria was a major metropolitan city in Egypt at the time. And um, uh, Alexander sees these children playing in the ocean and uh, they're baptizing each other. And one of them is pretending to be the bishop and baptize. And uh, it, that was Athanasius. And Athanasius grew up in a Christian household had a good education. But from that point forward, Bishop Alexander takes these children uh, into, under his wing and uh, Athanasius grows up to be a, a deacon in that church and he's an assistant to Bishop Alexander. He attends the first council of Con uh, Constantinople that Constantine convened to declare orthodoxy uh, and to settle this dispute between uh, 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 Arius and uh, uh, you know the the rest of the church, so he's an assistant bishop. He's an assistant uh, to the bishop there, and then three la three years later, uh, Alexander actually he passes away, and on his deathbed he declares Athanasius to be his successor, and Athanasius does not want to take the episcopate, but... Uh, How old was Athanasius? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, do you know, Father Richard? I don't know how old he was at the time. Um, but, uh, oh, actually... Like no, no, no. This is something that the Arians threw at him because there were canonical 
there, there were canons that said you couldn't become a bishop before you were 33 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Athanasius was like 30 or something. Mm -hmm. So this was something the Arians had thrown at him. Another thing that the Arians did, they would, they, they would bring charges against Athanasius that were outside of the scope of the, the theology of, of the, the Christology, the heretical Christology that they were pushing. For example, they brought things to Constantine, Constantine the Great, that uh, Athanasius was wanting to withhold uh, grain supplies to Alexandria. Mm -hmm. And, there, and uh, later on, some people claim that Athanasius murdered a bishop. Some bishop went missing, and they said, Athanasius murdered him. So there was all these kinds of claims from the Arians. They were very vicious, and, and they, were, they were unfounded claims that they would throw at Athanasius, but sometimes they would stick. And after Constantine died, he has his three sons, and that becomes this... Uh, uh, unstable relationship where some of his sons allow Athanasius to come back from exile. Others of them agree with the Arians and they have him exiled. Um, and then we have Athanasius going to the Bishop of Rome, seeking refuge there. And the Bishop of Rome then calling councils. And uh, often, particularly at the beginning, they would, they would do investigations. They would find Athanasius to be uh, uh, you know, orthodox, found innocent of the accusations. And, and this is the kind of back and forth. And he would be exiled, then he would come back to the sea. There may be like 10 years of peace, but then he would be exiled again. And there would be an Arian bishop who would take his see, his, his place of authority, and they would, he would be there. And this was his life for a long time. He had a few years of peace towards the end of his life, but he was exiled five times and uh, finally had a few years of peace uh, towards the end. Arians sound like Democrats. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, exactly. So I bring up Athanasius. We named the church after him because uh, he fought for orthodoxy. He had a historical precedent that gave him, um, not, only, not only did he have, he had the objective truth on his side, which could be found in scriptures, and it also could be found in the, in the history of the church where uh, the council had just declared what Arius was, or what Athanasius was defending. And uh, this is something that we have today. We are defending the truth of uh, the uh, lifelong nature of marriage, and we have tons of historical precedent to back us up. We have uh, the scriptures backing us up. We, everything is on our side, except for numbers. We don't have those on our side. That's it. But it was similar with Athanasius. Uh, I, in fact, I actually think Athanasius had more allies than we do. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a little bit difficult. But one of the things that the church does, and, Paul, and Jesus warns against this, the church looks at men like Athanasius, and what do they do? They build monuments to him. They decorate his tomb. They say, oh, how great St. Athanasius. He's such a great saint. And if they lived in the time of St. Athanasius, they would have been lying about him, and they would have been trying to get him out of his see. They would have been on the wrong side. And that's just the way that Jesus says this is the way they do it. You guys, you decorate the tombs of the prophets, but you would have been killing them if you lived in their time. Maybe so. Right. Yeah, they, exactly. So we have to understand where we're at in the story. And we uh, we understand that we kind of we are walking in St. Athanasius uh, footsteps in a certain way. So uh, I want to give a toast to St. Athanasius, a man who uh, stood against the world, defended uh, orthodoxy and uh, is the patron saint of, of this parish to St. Athanasius.